Hey guys, it's Peter Fry and welcome to the Living with Hope podcast, a daily devotional where we dig into God's word and explore what it means to, to live, live with, with hope, hope in, in Jesus. Jesus. I've got Mary here with me. <laughs> we are going to jump in today into 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verses 6 through 9. And part of the reason I wanted to have Mary on the podcast, one, I've been wanting to have Mary join us here on the podcast and just think through where we are in our world and this place in time, this moment in time that we find ourselves in. And also, as we've been walking through 2 Corinthians, this is very much Mary and I's heartbeat together for ministry. As Paul's explaining his ministry in and through suffering, yeah. Uh, it resonates so deeply with Mary and I. And as I was getting Ooh. ready for this passage, Ooh. I was using Mary's Bible and I saw that she had this passage underlined. <laughs> so I thought that this must have significance for her. <laughs> so let me, uh, do you want to read Second sure. Corinthians 5 verses 6 through 9? So we are always of good courage. We know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we are of good courage, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please Him. So what, what verse there did, do you have underlined? Yes, we are of good courage. I think that charge of having courage in the midst of suffering, number one, it points back to who is our life source? Who can give us courage when we don't feel like we have courage? Yeah. And <clears throat> also it's this passage to me is a big counter cultural um, refocus or framing, reframing. That's mm -hmm. what I was going to say. Reframing. So most people would say dying is bad and living is good. Mm-hmm. But we know that death is not the end. Yeah. And we also know that living amidst a suffering world is also not the end. And so we can have courage and continue. Yeah. So much of this whole passage, going back to chapter 4, where, where Paul continually says, we do not lose heart. And here he says... Yes, we are of good courage. And so he's talking about right now. And I think this is a good message for us right now yeah. in this moment in time that we can be of good courage. And he's walking through the thick of it. We're walking through the thick of it. And so like Mary said, this is a passage that kind of uh, shifts our perspective of what it means to live, what it means to die, what it means to walk through a dying world knowing that it's not the end. And so... I'm curious what this verse is. Yeah, verse so, 9. No, 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 Philippians. Oh, Philippians 1.3. Okay, <laughs> Mary has written 123. in the... 123. 123. <laughs> she has written in the uh, margin. margin here, Philippians 1.23. So let's turn there and see what it says. Uh, start oh, with verse, oh, oh, okay. verse 21. It Here says, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. Yet, which I shall choose, I cannot tell. I'm hard pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is necessary on your account. And this is written by the same person. Yeah. And it's just another time in his life where he was hard pressed or facing really extreme challenges. And that's true of, of us in, you know, this is a, a different time and our challenges look different than Paul's, but just like that reality of challenges come and seasons of life and seasons of greater challenge. And yet that truth of being here means struggle, but also means ministry and sharing hope in Jesus with others and yeah. encouragement. And it, it means a lot of things. And then the reality is after this, after we die, 
then that full union with Christ and that yeah. reality. Yeah, so, so let's zoom out. We, throughout chapter 5, Paul has been walking through this comparison of our earthly tent and our, and our eternal home. And he's looking forward to that day <laughs> when, as he <laughs> says, uh, our present experience will be swallowed up in life. Mm. And I love that picture of just what is yet to come just swallows what we're walking through right now. And so there is this future resurrection hope. And, and this is what I hope is coming across throughout 2 Corinthians because I think this is what Paul wants us to get is that the resurrection of Jesus is a past reality that points us to a future hope that changes our present experience. Amen. And so as we walk through <gasps> this present moment in time, we will walk through it with resurrection hope. So what does that mean? It means we have courage. And that's it, not of our own strength. Yeah, it, it's looking to, as it said in chapter one, where Paul says, we were so utterly burdened beyond our strength, we despised the life itself, but that was to make us rely not on our own strength, but on him <laughs> who raised Jesus from the dead. That gave me goosebumps. And so that's been the theme all throughout Second Corinthians. And so here, it, this is really coming to a turning point in, in the letter of 2 Corinthians because Paul is going to really point to why, what is God doing now? And I think that this, this is a message for us that and God, a question to ask. yeah, God wants to Ooh. use this moment in time. And, it, and so Paul is thinking about man, this is going to be so good when I'm united with Christ, when there's no more suffering, no more pain. And But what this resurrection hope does is it doesn't just give us a future longing, although it does. Yeah, I talked about that yesterday on the podcast. We have this groaning and this longing, and it's placed in us by God. But it's not just that future hope. It's a present experience and appeal. And throughout the rest of 2 Corinthians 5, Paul talks about how we are making our appeal, God is making his appeal through us to be reconciled to God, to experience the peace, the joy, the rest that is found in resurrection hope. And so he says here, we are of good courage. And what resurrection hope does in the present is it changes our priorities. No, what it, remember what it said in verse 9. So the, whether we are at home, speaking of being in our bodies, or away, speaking of being with Christ, we make it our aim to please <gasps> him. That, what comes to mind with that? Well, <clears throat> I think what comes to mind for me is pleasing Jesus with whatever today holds. And so if that's being in the hospital or being super active outside the home, doing ministry in some capacity or at home and sick or at home and baking bread or working on video editing or whatever it is, well, it, it comes back to whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Yeah. And so doing it for God's glory and doing it to, um, what is it? Please. Please him. Please him. And so I think, you know, my heart thinks about those of you all over the world who are walking through just a myriad of different challenges and how in in the simplicity of being in our homes, we can please him. Yeah. I think I, I think we have to recognize that he's talking about by home in a way. He's not talking about a stay at home order here. But I think that there's <laughs> it's very applicable to us who are many of us are stuck in our homes and we feel perhaps purposeless. It, it, that are normal uh, things that we do that we perha think perhaps this is how we please God and right. how we live our lives <laughs> are, are not our current. And, and what Paul's saying is, what's going to be the best, most pleasing 
amazing thing is when I depart from this body and I am at home with the Lord. Uh, but that is, it, it doesn't matter whether I'm home or away. It is my purpose. I have a purpose and that is to please God. And I think we have to ask here, how do we please God? It, it's not something that we earn from God, right. but it's this reality where God has invited us to find our delight in him. And I, I think John Piper says it well when he says, God is most glorified in us when we are most satisfied in him. And, and I, sometimes that can be in the stillness and the quietness of just sitting in God's presence. In your home. Yeah. Anywhere. Yeah. And so th this really is a recalibrating passage. We kind of skipped over, and I think this is a huge piece here, is that we walk by faith and not by sight. <laughs> and that, uh, yeah, that, I, we, there's so much we wanted to talk about here, but that is, uh, I mean, I think we often recite that in the church and in the Christian life because that really is um, this contrast, this recalibration of we walk by faith. And what uh, Paul's talking about here is we haven't seen our resurrected Lord. We haven't seen with our own eyes Jesus raised from the dead. But we believe by faith that he has and that we will. And so we walk by faith. We walk not looking in, at the things of this world, but looking to the things of God. And I think that there's a application here for us is as we walk through these times of uncertainty in our world, it's important for us to think about that aspect of our faith. Mm -hmm. That we look to invisible realities when it's so easy to keep our eyes glued on the visible realities of the news and what's going on in our world. And we have to look by faith to our resurrection hope. And that informs how we live yes. in the present. Amen.